If you're looking for a used vehicle in the Chicagoland area, North Naperville Autos is your one-stop shop for quality pre-owned cars. Stop in and visit or browse their inventory online at www.NorthNaperville-Autos.com. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2009 Honda CRV LX. Up front is a 2.4 liter inline 4 and down below is a 5 speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here CRV for a couple of reasons. Mainly the fact that I grew up with a couple people in high school that had these CRVs. I think they really are fantastic little SUVs. I haven't filmed one on the channel, so I'm excited to share it with you today. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPradle.com, where you can buy stickers and other merchandise when it becomes available. You can also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form, and you get a video of your car just like this one. And you could read my behind-the-scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to that 2.4 liter under the hood. Well, it makes about 166 horsepower, which is actually six more horsepower than the previous generation of CRV. It is known as the K24Z1, which the most important bit is the fact that it is a K series engine from Honda. Honda fanboys and Honda enthusiasts love the K series engine. They use it in a couple performance cars as well, in other variants here and there, but the K series is synonymous with Honda and how great it really is. They use this engine all throughout the 2000s, and they even still use the K20, the 2-liter variant, to this day in some Honda Civic models. In my book, it's one of the great engine families. I think it makes a good amount of power for its displacement, still gets good fuel economy, and overall is a really solid engine. Now, like I said, paired to it is a five-speed automatic. This got carried over from the previous generation as well, and it's a little dated by 2009 standards. I probably would have started to like to have seen a six speed. However, not the end of the world. Last but not least, this here CRV is all wheel drive. However, you can find front wheel drive versions. With that quick stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have two main gauges and a screen. Off to the left is my tachometer, off to the right is my speedometer, and in the center I get my little digital readout for odometer, MPG, fuel, and coolant temperature. On the steering wheel, I only have buttons off to the right for my cruise control. I don't get any volume buttons on here, which is a little annoying and I'll talk about it more in a second, but something I would have liked to have seen was some volume knobs or skip track on the steering wheel. The overall look and feel of the steering wheel is fine after almost 90,000 miles seems to have held up decently well. Off to the left, I do have a climate control vent as well as my traction control off and my power mirror adjustments. Moving on to the door, I have my latch get in and out up top, lock and unlock, and my power windows down below. Moving into the center, I have two climate control vents and the hazard switch, and then I have an aftermarket radio. This is why I wish the steering wheel had volume controls, because this aftermarket radio has a really terrible way of doing the volume. It's these weird touch buttons. And so if I had steering wheel controls, I could just skip all of that but now I'm stuck using this aftermarket garbage. But obviously that only pertains to this particular CRV. Then I do have climate controls, pretty basic here. I don't get dual zone or anything like that, but I have fan speed off to left, temperature to the right, where to send it in the middle, as well as max AC recirculating and rear defrost. Very, very simple. Then I have the shifter itself. The shifter is found up on the dash. Honda has done this in a couple of their models throughout the 2000s, and I like it. It's actually kind of a natural position for the gear shifter to be in, and it's not very far. I don't have to reach far to put it in and out of gear, and it opens up space in the center console, which is very, very nice. Moving down below that shifter, we do have some cubbies and other odds and ends down here, and then we do have a gap and the center console itself. The center console does have cup holders so we will do a big friggin bottle test here in the honda crv from 2009 and unfortunately the bottle starts to go in but it wiggles around the whole time and if it was more full it's a little empty today it would have fallen over 10 times already so unfortunately the 2009 honda crv fails the big friggin bottle test <laughs> 
then I just have some cubby space here as well. These are like rubberized mats. They're non-slip, which is really great. So if you put things down here, they're not going to roll around unless you put marbles in your center console, which honestly at that point, that's kind of on you. But it's a non-slip surface and I really like it. Then we have the seats. The seats are decently comfortable. They are cloth. They're not any award-winning here or there seats, but I do enjoy them. However, they have the little built-in armrest that you would find in like second row seats because the center console isn't high enough. And for me personally, I'm just a really wide guy. I can't really utilize these little armrests. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2009 Honda CRV and a couple of things to note. First of all, I don't really get any crazy amenities back here. I can fold just this center seat down to kind of make a makeshift armrest, but there is also this one with the two cup holders in it. In case you were wondering, I don't really get anything down here, but it's just funny to me to be back here because I remember very distinctly, I was driven to my high school graduation in the back of one of these after I got picked up from the courthouse to pay a speeding ticket I got on prom night. So if that's not every car enthusiast experience in high school, I got a ticket on prom night that I had to pay the morning of graduation and I rode back here and I was in a suit and tie and everything um, going to my high school graduation. So definitely brings back memories back here and that's what I love. I fit back here great. Headroom great, knee room great. You know, it's a really good back seat. It's a very ergonomic back seat. It works and it works very well. We'll talk about that whole concept towards the end of the video. But let's go take a look at the trunk and cargo space and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so we're on the back of the 09 CRV, little button inside of here. Just push that and then pull up real nice and light tailgate. However, once we are back here, nothing too crazy to report. You can put like a sort of privacy cover here. This car doesn't have that. Obviously it is a used car, so the floor mats are here. And then you can pull this up and you do get your spare tire and jack and things like that. What I would have liked to have seen that I'm not seeing. Oh, there it is. Okay, never mind. 12 volt outlet. That's sort of my rule of thumb for SUVs. I always like seeing a 12 volt outlet in the back for a tire inflator, air mattress on a camping trip, whatever it might be. So, pretty good space back here. This does not have a third row, although it is a decent sized SUV. So, you get plenty of cargo space back here. And I really, really like that about the CRV. Now, we got to talk about the looks. And again, you know, I've said this in many, many videos. To me, this is sort of macaroni styling. Macaroni styling is a phrase I came up with because I grew up loving mac and cheese. It was like my comfort food and it reminds me of my childhood every time I eat it. So this car reminds me of my childhood and it's sort of mushy. It's nostalgic for me. Overall, I don't think it's super pretty. I don't think it's ugly. I think it just kind of exists. But every time I see one, I'm hit with a little bit of nostalgia of growing up in junior high and high school and riding in the back seat of one of my friend's CRVs. This was a very, very popular car when I was growing up. I was in high school from 2012 to 2016. So they were a couple years old at this point, And so a lot of kids had hand-me-down CRVs growing up. One of my closest friends did. And so I had a lot of experience with these cars. So seeing one always makes me happy. But speaking of which, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think finally driving one of these on the channel? I've actually driven a handful of them, but never reviewed one because high school was mostly before I was doing these videos. Well, I love the CRV. Now this is a third generation Honda CRV. It debuted for the 2007 model year and it quickly became the best selling SUV in the United States and the second best selling SUV in Canada only behind the Ford Escape. These were immensely popular. Like I said, I could name three people right now that owned them in high school. I'm sure that there were tons more. And so why is that? Why was this such an incredibly popular car? Well, in order to understand it, I want to bring up a topic that I've been recently obsessed with, something called desire paths. Desire paths are when something isn't plotted out specifically, but people end up making their own path. It's like when you see on college campuses, there's like the two walkways that you're supposed to use, but everyone cuts through. That's a desire path. When you're walking through the woods and you see that the brush is a little bit thinner in a straight line, 
that's a desire path. The reason I bring those up is because this car feels like a desire path. Everything in here has a very specific function and works because it's the easiest way. It's the path of least resistance. Like I mentioned with that shifter, it's in the perfect location where it's not too far to grasp, but gives you the maximum amount of space for the center console. The numbers on the gauges are big enough for me to see, but not overbearing. Makes it very easy to tell my speed and engine RPM. It's the easiest path. The ride height, the size, the seats, all seem to be the perfect size to fit anyone. The looks are handsome enough, but won't stick you out like a sore thumb on a crowded street. It seems as though this car was designed through evolution and not a bunch of suits in a boardroom. Everything in here feels natural. And to me, that can be really, really important with a car. Everything in here is spaced in a great way. Nothing's too far out of reach or too close besides the armrests on the seats, but that's a me thing, that's not a CRV thing. The engine, if I floor it, it'll do stuff, but it's not going to be too quick. The CRV is a rock in a riverbed being shaped and molded by the things around it until it's the perfect object for its time and location. That's what I love about this car. That's why CRVs, in my opinion, sold so well and continue to sell well on the secondhand market. Selling a CRV, it's not a hard thing to do because a lot of people want them and I fully understand why. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to North Naperville Autos for letting me take out their CRV. This thing is fantastic. I'm so glad I was able to finally film one for the channel after having ridden in them and driven them for so many years, I finally get to share my thoughts with you guys about it. And that is all thank you to North Naperville Autos. Their information is up on the screen. They offer shipping, financing, and they are Carfax certified, so you know you're going to be getting a good deal. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.